August 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Isaiah chapters 3 through 5 of the Old Testament Look, the Sovereign Lord who commands armies is about to remove from Jerusalem and Judah every source of security including all the food and water, the mighty men and warriors, judges and prophets, omen readers and leaders, captains of groups of 50, the respected citizens, advisors and those skilled in magical arts, and those who know incantations. The Lord says, I will make use their officials. Malicious young men will rule over them. The people will treat each other harshly. Men will oppose each other. Neighbors will fight. Youths will proudly defy the elderly, and riffraff will challenge those who were once respected. Indeed, a man will grab his brother right in his father's house and say, You own a coat, you be our leader. This heap of ruins will be under your control. At that time, the brother will shout, I am no doctor. I have no food or coat in my house. Don't make me a leader of the people. Jerusalem certainly stumbles. Judah falls. For their words and their actions offend the Lord. They rebel against his royal authority. The look on their faces testifies to their guilt. Like the people of Sodom, they openly boast of their sin. Too bad for them, for they bring disaster on themselves. Tell the innocent it will go well with them, for they will be rewarded for what they have done. Too bad for the wicked sinners, for they will get exactly what they deserve. Oppressors treat my people cruelly. Creditors rule over them. My people's leaders mislead them. They give you confusing directions. The Lord takes his position to judge. He stands up to pass sentence on his people. The Lord comes to pronounce judgment on the leaders of his people and their officials. He says it is you who have ruined the vineyard. You have stashed in your house which you have stolen from the poor. Why do you crush my people and grind the faces of the poor? The sovereign Lord who commands armies has spoken. The Lord says, the women of Zion are proud. They walk with their heads high and flirt with their eyes. They skip along and the jewelry on their ankles jingles. So the sovereign master will afflict the foreheads of Zion's women with skin diseases. The Lord will make the front of their heads bald. At that time, the sovereign master will remove their beautiful ankle jewelry, neck ornaments, crescent-shaped ornaments, earrings, bracelets, veils, headdresses, ankle ornaments, sashes, sachets, amulets, rings, nose rings, festive dresses, robes, shawls, purses, garments, vests, head coverings, and gowns. A putrid stench will replace the smell of spices, a rope will replace a belt. Baldness will replace braided locks of hair, a sackcloth garment will replace a fine robe, and a prisoner's brand will replace beauty. Your men will fall by the sword. Your strong men will die in battle. Her gates will mourn and lament. Deprived of her people, she will sit on the ground. Seven women will grab hold of one man at that time. They will say, we will provide our own food. We will provide our own clothes. But let us belong to you. Take away our shame. At that time, the crops given by the Lord will bring admiration and honor. The produce of the land will be a source of pride and delight to those who remain in Israel. Those remaining in Zion, those left in Jerusalem, will be called holy, all in Jerusalem who are destined to live. At that time, the sovereign master will wash the excrement from Zion's women. He will rinse the bloodstains from Jerusalem's midst as he comes to judge and to bring devastation. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over its convocations a cloud and smoke by day and a bright flame of fire by night. Indeed, a canopy will accompany the Lord's glorious presence. By day it will be a shelter to provide shade from the heat, as well as safety and protection from the heavy downpour. I will sing to my love a song to my lover about his vineyard. My love had a vineyard on a fertile hill. He built a hedge around it, removed its stones, and planted a vine. He built a tower in the middle of it and constructed a wine press. He waited for it to produce edible grapes, but it produced sour ones instead. So now, residents of Jerusalem, people of Judah, you decide between me and my vineyard. What more can I do for my vineyard beyond what I have already done? 
When I waited for it to produce edible grapes, why did it produce sour ones instead? Now I will inform you what I am about to do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and turn it into pasture. I will break its wall and allow animals to graze there. I will make it a wasteland. No one will prune its vines or hoe its ground, and thorns and briars will grow there. I will order the clouds not to drop any rain on it. Indeed, Israel is the vineyard of the Lord, who commands armies. The people of Judah are the cultivated place in which he took delight. He waited for justice, but look what he got. Disobedience. He waited for fairness, but look what he got. Cries for help. Those who accumulate houses are as good as dead. Those who also accumulate landed property until there is no land left. And you are the only landowners remaining within the land. The Lord who commands armies told me this. Many houses will certainly become desolate. Large, impressive houses will have no one living in them. Indeed, a large vineyard will produce just a few gallons, and enough seed to yield several bushels will produce less than a bushel. Those who get up early to drink beer are as good as dead. Those who keep drinking long after dark until they are intoxicated with wine. They have stringed instruments, tambourines, flutes, and wine at their parties. So they do not recognize what the Lord is doing. They do not perceive what he is bringing about. Therefore, my people will be deported because of their lack of understanding. Their leaders will have nothing to eat. Their masses will have nothing to drink. So death will open up its throat and open wide its mouth. Zion's dignitaries and masses will descend into it, including those who revel and celebrate within her. Men will be humiliated. They will be brought low. The proud will be brought low. The Lord who commands armies will be exalted when he punishes. The sovereign God's authority will be recognized when he judges. Lambs will graze as if in their pastures. Amid the ruins, the rich sojourners will graze. Those who pull evil along using cords of emptiness are as good as dead, who pull sin as with cart ropes. They will say, let him hurry, let him act quickly, so we can see. Let the plan of the Holy One of Israel take shape and come to pass. Then we will know it. Those who call evil good and good evil are as good as dead, who turn darkness into light and light into darkness, who turn bitter into sweet and sweet into bitter. Those who think they are wise are as good as dead. Those who think they possess understanding. Those who are champions at drinking wine are as good as dead, who display great courage when mixing strong drinks. They pronounce the guilty innocent for a payoff. They ignore the just cause of the innocent. Therefore, as flaming fire devours straw and dry grass disintegrates in the flames, so their root will rot and their flower will blow away like dust. For they have rejected the law of the Lord who commands armies. They have spurned the commands of the Holy One of Israel. So the Lord is furious with his people. He lifts his hand and strikes them. The mountains shake and corpses lie like manure in the middle of the streets. Despite all this, his anger does not subside and his hand is ready to strike again. He lifts a signal flag for a distant nation. He whistles for it to come from the far regions of the earth. Look, they come quickly and swiftly. None tire or stumble. They don't stop to nap or sleep. They don't loosen their belts or unstrap their sandals to rest. Their arrows are sharpened and all their bows are prepared. The hooves of their horses are hard as flint and their chariot wheels are like a windstorm. Their roar is like a lion's. They roar like young lions. They growl and seize their prey. They drag it away and no one can come to the rescue. At that time, they will growl over their prey. It will sound like sea waves crashing against the rocks. One will look out over the land and see the darkness of disaster. Clouds will turn the light into darkness. God, I come before you today begging you for grace and thanking you for all the grace you've already given me in these verses as always with Isaiah there's so much to consider but when but when he's talking about what the Lord is going to take away from these proud women I think about a lot of things the first thing that came to my mind should have been my own life but the first thing that came to my mind was our civilization as a whole um, because all of these 
chapters are talking about these communities and, and these groups of people and your chosen people specifically God uh, and how they're behaving and so first and foremost I think I thought of our uh, community here in the United States and and how we're acting and the punishment that is being served out through uh, children born out of wedlock uh, divorces um, people having affairs all sorts of things born out of this arrogance of women not saying that men aren't guilty of this but in this particular chapter the arrogance of women the only reason that that women do all those things is exactly what it says Isaiah says in here that they flirt with their eyes uh, and walk with their heads high uh, so that enticement to the opposite sex and and also that arrogance um, that I have more that I'm better than I'm skinnier prettier wealthier than another woman uh, also plays into it as well and in here you know God just takes everything away from them and they see that happening in our culture everything is getting taken away from them they go after all of these things that the world offers them that they can be sexual symbols to men and can get what they want through sexual desires and then they're just left in heaps of nothingness they have nothing to show for anything uh, that they've gone out and sought but what I really should have done is look at my own life because I'm just as guilty when <laughs> when Isaiah is talking about all the things that women go through to make themselves more beautiful to to the opposite sex and for that enticement and that flirting I I have a lot of those things not specific things but I have a lot of clothes in my wardrobe a lot more than most people do I have I have tons of shoes uh, I wear makeup I curl my hair uh, and most people say oh that's that's totally normal but you've called us to a life that is dependent upon you God you didn't call us to a life that's dependent upon our husband or a significant other or our wife as the case may be for the men listening you called us to be fully dependent upon you you actually called us to a life where all we need and you're very clear throughout the whole Bible all we need is you we need nothing else apart from you anything else on top of it is simply meant to increase your kingdom to bring glory to you and we don't we don't get that we really <laughs> we really struggle to get that I just uh, saw a post from a friend of mine on Facebook and it just broke my heart he's begging people in this one group to pray for him because he wants a wife so desperately and my heart breaks for him because there was a point in time where I was that way about wanting a husband I truly thought that that's what I needed it's what I wanted and it took a lot of work as you know God it took a lot of work and a lot of tears and a lot of fears overcome to get to the point where I fully realized that all I need is you and it doesn't mean that the world doesn't continually try to convince me that I need all of these things to attract the opposite sex and the world constantly tries to convince me that I should be in a couple I should have a husband um, I should have kids <laughs> I should have all of these things um, but you say no your will in my life is exactly where I am right now I am single I am loving you God um, I'm working on my ministry and figuring out what you want me to do with that and that's where you want me to be right now and that's may maybe where you always want me to be that trust and faith in your plan for my life has to come above everything else it has to come above what the world tempts me with um, and it's so humorous that I that I work in the marketing world where we create a lot of that illusion of, of success and sexiness and beautifulness luckily my business doesn't do that but but that whole world of marketing that's exactly what that is about God today I just pray that you are enough that our hearts realize that all we need is your grace and your love all we need is you in our lives all we need is your word all we need is that communication between you and I to happen we don't need anything else we don't need titles at work we don't need a certain amount of money we don't need a certain person at our side I will grant you it's hard sometimes it's lonely sometimes I get jealous sometimes of other people who have what I want and take it for granted but those are all things I'm working on with you and only with your strength am I able to work on those things today allow us to fully recognize that you are more than enough for what we need that you supply all of our needs 
that you love us so much that you have promised to take care of us and give us everything that we need that is the best of everything that you know we need. I realize sometimes it's really hard to have faith in that because sometimes, most of the time, we can't see that big picture like you can. But to have faith and trust in you that I don't need all of these things that the world tells me, I only need you, God. And whatever you provide for me is way more a blessing than I deserve. God, allow us to just rest in that amazing, peaceful area of our life, filled with joy, filled with grace that I am so thankful for, filled with forgiveness of things I've done in the past and will probably do in the future, having to do with this exact situation. And most of all, thank you for your love, for loving me enough to want more than the world wants for me. God, I just pray for every heart listening today that they will accept that you're more than enough for them, for all situations, all circumstances, against all people, against all situations, that you, who command the armies of heaven, are more than enough. In your precious son's name I pray, amen.